shout out to all my subscribers, new and old. Uh, how are we doing out there? Uh, getting ready for a great Labor Day weekend. I'm going to mix in a little math. Um, today we're going to be looking at estimating uh, limits. Gosh, estimating derivatives from a table. Sorry. Estimating derivatives from a table. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to talk. Um, I just want to reiterate what I said in class today about all the things that point towards a derivative, all the different notations and words that do that. So again, um, slopes of tangent lines, f prime of x, instantaneous rate of change, dy dx, all point us towards the derivative. I haven't talked a lot about dy dx. Again, that's, you can kind of look at dy dx and think instantaneous rate of change. Um, it's, it's the, you know, the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x. And we know slope is like rate of change, right? y over x it should all kind of come together. Let me just show you what a derivative looks like, um, the notation with dy dx. So from this notation here, we see y equals 5x cubed. It says find dy dx, and then we see that big vertical line, and x equals 2. That means we want to find dy dx, the derivative of y, um, at the value x equals 2. So um, again, whenever we're finding a derivative at a point, right, we're finding the slope of the tangent line at that point. But before we, before we find the derivative at 2, we want to first find the derivative at x. So just follow my work here and see if it makes sense. <clears throat> Notice y was already in ax to the n form, so I didn't have to do any recon reconnoitering, reconfiguring to get it going. Um, I just go straight to dy dx. Notice how I didn't write just 15x squared, I wrote dy dx equals 15x squared. Good notation is very important. Now I want to show that the derivative at the x value of 2, um, show, show that thing's value. So I'm going to start a new line. I'm not just going to say equals 15 times 2 squared. Um, I want to start a new line and say this. Again, I don't want to tack a bunch of things together with equal signs that aren't equal. dy dx equals 15x squared, but dy dx evaluated at x equals 2 equals 15 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 15 is 60. Um, let's take a look at estimating derivatives from a table. This is very, 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 very common on the AP free response, and um, it should be as close to uh, about the easiest point you can get on the test. We just got to make sure we do it right and accurately. So I'm going to start with a function um, x and f of x, and then we'll mix it in. Usually it's in the context of some word problem, but we'll look at that in a second. Go ahead and copy this table into your notes.
Okay, so here we see a data table. Um, get used to seeing lots of data tables. It's just the way that the um, AP likes to present information. Um, once again, we don't know anything about f of x. We don't even know if f of x is continuous or not. All we know, all we have are these random values. Um, so what, what they're going to ask us is um, they're going to ask you to estimate a derivative. Obviously, we can't find f prime of x because we don't even know what f of x is, right? We can't use the power rule, or when we learn other new rules, we can't use those either. But we can estimate it. So a question that you might see, and usually the, the f prime that they want you to estimate is a value that's an x value that's not even in the table. So here's, a, here's an example. Estimate f prime of 2. So once again here, we, we're looking for the derivative evaluated at the point 2. Now if we knew f of x, we'd find f prime of x, and then we'd plug in 2 into that function. But we don't even know the function f of x, so we can't find f prime of x, and we can't find f prime of 2. But we can estimate it. Um, when you get this problem, eventually I want you to be able to solve this thing immediately without going through these steps. But to learn how to do it, I want to think about what this thing looks like if we graphed it, okay? So I want to just plot uh, on a simple graph those four points that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that here. I didn't leave myself a lot of room here. Um, so I'm going to do my best to plot these points. Again, this is just a rough sketch. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. It'll just give us an idea of what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plot the point 0, 10. I'm going to plot the point 4, 2. I'm going to plot the point 8, 20. And I'm going to plot the point 12, negative 4. Again, I don't exactly know how this thing connects, right? If we knew f was continuous, we'd know it have to, they'd have to connect continuously. But again, data tables are leaving out tons of information. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of connect these dots. Okay. Okay, so I just went ahead and connected those dots. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with the slope of the tangent line at the value 2. Now, we definitely don't know what that is, but we're going to try and reason what would be our best guess. So again, we're looking for this tangent line at 2. We're looking for the slope of that red line. Now with the limited information we have, the best guess that we're going to be able to make is actually the slope um, between the two points that surround 2. So we have a point of 0, negative 10. We have a point of 4, 2. We actually, our best guess at the slope at the, of, of the tangent line at 2 is going to be the slope of the line that connects from 0, negative 10 to 4, 2. As you can see, the way I drew it here, that blue slope, that that we can calculate um, looks like in the picture I drew to be pretty close to the red slope um, of the 
um, tangent line at 2. And again, this is just an estimate. It could totally be doing something else, but our best guess is to look at the slope of the points around it. So here's what we say. Notation here is very, very important. So here's what we're going to say. We're estimating f prime of 2. So to answer this correctly, here's what we want to say. Notice the type of equal sign that I put there. I put the approximately equal to sign. We don't want to say f prime of 2 equals because we don't know if it's true or not. What, what we do know is that it's our best guess. It's an estimation, so we use approximately equal to. Okay, so it's going to be the slope between those other two points. The important thing here is that you include a difference quotient in your response. So it's going to be the slope between the points 0, negative 10, and 4, 2. And we know that slope is change in y over change in x. So it's going to look like this. We, we need to see a difference quotient, so we need to have subtraction in there. So it's going to look like this. So it'll be f of 4 minus f of 0, the y values, over 4 minus 0, the x values. So it's the difference in y over the difference in x. Now we can actually plug in these numbers to see what they are and get, a, get our answer. Now, everything from now on are going to be values that are exactly equal to f of 4 minus f of 0 over 4 minus 0. So I don't need to continue to use approximately equal signs. I only use it between f prime of 2 and my difference quotient. So note, that's just a regular old equal sign. f of 4 is 2. f of 0 is negative 10. So we end up with f prime of 2. Our best guess for f prime of 2 here is that f prime of 2 is approximately equal to 3. Again, when you do this, they need to see a difference quotient. You can't just look at it and know that it's going to be 3 and say f prime of 2 equal, approximately equals 3. That's not enough, not enough to do that. Okay. Um, using the same data table, we're going to keep this video short today. Let's, uh, let's, I want you to approximate f prime of 6. So go ahead and estimate So go ahead and pause the video here. I want you to estimate f prime of 6. And I want you to, um, when you've done this, make sure you have everything included that you need to include. And check back with me and, and the final answer here. Okay, we're back. So um, once again, 6 isn't in our table. But we know that 6 is between 4 and 8. So we're going to use the points 4, 2, and 8, 20 to estimate f prime of 6. Here's what it's going to look like. So, how did you do? 
Did you make sure you wrote f prime of 6 approximately equals? Do you have that approximately equal sign in there? Did you write a difference quotient? Did you show that you're getting these values by doing f of 8 minus f of 4, the two values that surround 6 in our table? You have 8 minus 4 on the bottom. Change in y over change in x. We get that equals 20 minus 2 over 4, which is 18 over 4, which is 9 halves. You don't have to do that very last step of saying f prime of 6 is approximately equal to 9 halves, but I like to do that to have that value clearly stated for the graders. Um, that's it for today. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. We'll look at these tables um, when we have to deal with different units and things like that. We'll look at that in our next video. Um, have an awesome Labor Day weekend. Peace.